it is as important as it's ever been. Um, and probably more so when you're a bigger band because you can lose touch with your fans. So, for instance, when we were signed in 91 and we went out on the road in 92 and we just we opened up for everybody. And what we do after our set, our opening set, in between the break, bef- I mean, the interval before the main band came on, we used to go and leaflet the audience, go around the audience, give them a sticker with our name on it, you know, just interact. And, and um, you're building your tribe. It's like your tribe. And it's really important. And you have to remember what it was like when you were a teenager or when you were listening to music, when you were a student, when you were at that, those tender ages that when music means so much to you. Um, and you have to, you, yeah, you have to, you have to build up this trust. And this trust, that we always thought that this trust was, for instance, we always intended to make very different records. And that was the idea. And then no two records are going to be the same. Um, so what you had to do was you had to build up the trust with your fans, for want of a better word, that they like your last record and they might have heard a bit of your new record and thought, mm, this sounds a bit different, I'm not sure about this, but you have to, there has to be that trust there that they, that they go, oh, we know that this, is, this, this, is going, this might be challenging or it might be a bit more difficult to get into, but there's something at the heart of it, there's an, there's an emotional content, there's, there's something, it's not arbitrary. And that is hugely important. And I think now, I mean, I remember when we were making OK Computer, we, we uh, were on the road a lot, and I think we were starting to feel slightly removed from the people who were coming to our shows. Um, and I remember that we, and this is, this is about, this is 90, this is 96, the end of 96. And there was this thing of the, on our website we'd set up, was a, a chat room. And I remember really well, we were in this amazing house, St. Catherine's Court, outside Bath, in the library. And it was like, we were actually communicating with people who were our fans on our chat room. And it was absolutely astonishing it was really it was exciting it was so exciting and that extended to kid a uh, which was 10 years ago we were in the studio uh, i did an online diary which i guess is you call a blog now and that whole thing has been absolutely be- key because that is the thing in all of this that's that's sort of been forgotten i guess in a way is over the years that actually the the, the key relationship is between the band and the people who like that band and we have this wonderful means to do this now, to achieve communication through, through the web, through the internet. Well, it's the, it's the, it's the hot potato of the moment, isn't it? Um, there's a part of me, a very strong part of me, that feels that peer-to-peer illegal downloading, and this is my own personal view, is just um, a more complete or a more sophisticated version of what we did in the 80s and which was home taping. Um, uh, Maybe that's a bit naive, but I still believe that people, people, you know, if if they actually get into your music, that's a huge thing. What we used to do is classically, you know, someone would buy the album and it was when this whole home taping is killing music sort of the skull and crossbones stuff which we all laughed at because we were con- listening to lots of music and if we really liked it we went out and bought the album well i think it's probably a bit different now but i think what happens is very similar that peer-to-peer legal file sharing happens and if they really like it some of them might go and buy the records might buy the cd but what we don't know yet is what those people also will go and spend, will go and buy a concert ticket, you know, will go and buy a T-shirt. So there's been huge amounts of panic in all of this and saying, oh, this illegal file sharing is terrible. It's, you know, it's killing the industry. It's, and it's, it's, you know, obviously in, in, in all things being equal, uh, there wouldn't be illegal file sharing, but there is. And, 
I have a problem about it when people, you know, in the industry say it's it's the it's the you know it's it's killing it's killing the industry it's the you know it's the thing that's ripping us apart. I don't actually believe it is because what we haven't seen yet, and we've had all sorts of research and stuff like that, but what we haven't actually had is anything that says, well, they might not buy a record, they might not buy an album, but they're spending their music, they're spending their money on something else, they're buying concert tickets, they're buying, you know, as I said, T-shirts, whatever. The business model has to change, and I think there are obviously certain parties that are very scared of doing that. Um, there's a very, very, I mean, to me, there's a very, very easy, there's a very basic thing that needs to be done initially. If you, what you've got to do is you've got to license out more music and have more websites selling more music, more Spotify's of this world, more websites. It's got to happen. You've got to make, you've got to make it slightly cheaper as well to get music, I think, in order to compete with the peer-to-peers. Um, but you're right, more people are consuming more music than ever before. What happens with BitTorrent websites, everybody probably knows this, but it's a, it's a very utilitarian way of, of getting music. It's, 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 it's deeply unsexy. You know, and I've said this before, if I was like a, you know, you know the Richard Branson of, of, of nowadays would be, would be able to license and set up a really amazing website for like 14 to 24 year olds that deals with their music, music that they want, and it has really good content in it. I mean, it's all about content on the web. You know, it's about the personal touch and do something really, really innovative, innovative in that sense. And, and, and make it really easy for people to buy music and cheap. Because there's also the other, there's a very, there's another thing. A lot of 14 to 16 year olds or whatever, 17 year olds, don't have credit cards. So how are they going to get music digitally? We haven't addressed this. These are very, very, very basic issues. And they... I find it staggering that the, 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 the industry seems to be really dragging its heels on this. And, and, and you know, it, 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 this is stuff that you could do in, in one week. It's not, you know, move quicker. And that's been the whole problem in the last 10 years is that, you know, why, we, why are we here now is because the industry dragged its feet, the recording industry dragged its feet over digital, you know.